Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Gigi and today we're going to cook up a little Thai red curry. It's kind of like a soup that we're going to serve it over rice and it's going to have some seafood, some shrimp, some cod, various vegetables. Of course we're going to have all our little Asian ingredients. We're going to have some coconut milk and lime leaves and all of those things. And I'm going to go through them as I add them to the pot so I can show it to you. Okay, I got my big stock pot here. And if you have a big wok or you whatever you want to use, but I'm using a big stock pot. I'm actually going to do a double batch today. And if I have any leftovers, I'm going to freeze it. So I'm going to start out. So the recipe that I put in the description box is usually like just a small amount. It's for a serving for two to four people. This I'm hoping to double and have a serving for six to eight people. So that's where I'm starting. I'm going to start with a little oil in the bottom. And of course we have to start out with some curry paste and I am using red Thai curry paste. I don't make my own because I like to just go real quick and get it done. And you can make your own and there's a million recipes out there for uh, curry paste. And it's pretty easy, but curry paste contains your garlic and your peppers and your lime leaves and your lemongrass and it's all ground really finely and put together in a paste with some oils and so forth. This is all about your taste. How, how garlic garlicky you want it, how sour you want it, how sweet you want it, how whatever. So it's very individual. So you can make sure that you make it like you want. So that's a half a package of my paste that I'm going to break it down in the pot, get it cooking in my oils, frying up. I'm going to turn my pot down. It's a little hot. Get it to where it's broken down. Now I'm going to add in some of my aromatics, which is basically my green onions and a little extra ginger. Got my green onions over here. I'm going to throw those in and let those fry along. Oops. I think I just missed my pot. But with this, this curry is like, you can put anything in here you want. You can put whatever you want in here. Onions and garlic, you can put all kinds of vegetables, green beans, whatever you have in the fridge. I think I got a knob of ginger here just because I like fresh ginger in mine with the fresh lime. Now I don't have kefir lime leaves, and I think that's how you say it, which is the Thai lime leaves. So I ordered some dry ones online, so I'm hoping that those will work. There we go, some nice fresh ginger going in. And you can taste it after you get it all together and see how you like it. Now once I get going here a little bit, I'm gonna add, gonna add a few more things. And that's about a half of inch knob of ginger that I've grated in here. Put that in there. Give my little spatula here. There we go. Now I have to say that every time I'll say, oh, I'm making curry, everybody goes, ooh, curry. But then every time I make the Thai coconut curry, I take it to work or whatever. They're like, oh my gosh, this tastes so good. Now there's some serrano peppers I'm adding because this is going to have some heat to it. I'm hoping we have a heat factor about six to seven maybe i like it spicy my family likes it spicy but you can make it less spicy don't add the peppers to it if you don't want to i'm going to stir those around but here's my dried lime leaves that i get that i got online you can see they're dried and i'm hoping they kind of work like bay leaves i've never used them before but we'll see how it works out so we're going to add that in there and in just a few minutes I'm going to add some a little bit of coconut milk and I'm going to blend this all up with the coconut milk and cook it down. Now if you were adding different kinds of onions or you were adding your uh, some fresh garlic in here, um, this is where you would put it in all your aromatics and let them fry up a little bit with the curry paste. And then in a little while you can taste it and see if you need to add more curry paste or not after you get a good simmer going. 
All right. I'm going to add just now, this is three cups, so the normal would be a cup and a half. But I'm going to add three cups, but I'm just going to put a little bit enough to coat the bottom right now to kind of deglaze my pot with the coconut milk. And this is full fat coconut milk. And you can see how it breaks down. Oh, that coconut's already smelling so wonderful. And it's breaking down and it's blending up. And that's basically what we're trying to do is just make sure the curry paste is good and blended in there. I'm gonna get this hot, make sure the bottom of the pan is deglazed. And then I'm gonna start adding in all my liquids. Oh yeah, that looks really good. So there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and here's the rest of my coconut milk is going in. So that would be one and a half if you're doubling it. Yeah, I'm putting three cups right now of my coconut. I've got a one cup of chicken stock and you can add more coconut milk if you want. If it's too thin for you, you don't have to put so much if you don't want to. We've got in here about six tablespoons of brown sugar that's going in as well. You can use palm sugar if you want. There we go. I've got three tablespoons of fish stock going in. You could add more, you can add less. And then I have a, taste, a tablespoon of tamarind paste. And tamarind paste is supposed to add the sour element to your basic Asian. But to me it tastes a little bit like um, sauteed caramelized onions and lime. And it is sour, but it's not that sour. I think it tastes really good myself. So I'm adding a tablespoon to it. So we'll see how that does. I can add more or not. You know, they talk about it has to be blended, uh, blend your Asian food. And I think this goes with any food. There's my timer. That's telling me my, my rice should be done. I already cooked my rice. Um, that you should have it. It should be balanced, the sweet and the sour. Um, the salty, the unami, all should balance. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that's good for you. Um, I like that, but I think I like mine more sour than I do. So my balance may be a little different than your balance. My friend, uh, Mike, he loves everything super sweet. And so uh, he would like uh, it to be a little more sweet. His balance would lean more to the sweetness side. So I think you just have to add your ingredients and then taste it and then add what you think it needs. Maybe you like it a little saltier. So you might add a little more fish toss. Um, I can give it a little bit of taste on my broth and see how it goes. And then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna put the lid on it. I'm gonna bring it to a simmer and I'll be right back. I think we got a bit of a simmer. So I'm gonna stir this around and I am going to give it a little taste at this point and see if I need to add any more curry paste. I'm going to turn it down. I just want a low simmer. I'm going to add my leaves in there. There goes my lime leaves in. I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and these were dried lime leaves. If you have a good Asian market, you should be able to get fresh lime leaves, which I, that's what I've always used in the past. But I got these on line and I want to give them a go. So we're going to let that go. Now, I will say that I do watch YouTube videos and I do watch cooking shows. And there's one Asian lady that I like to watch. Um, she has a little cooking uh, YouTube video called uh, Hot Thai Kitchen. And I think it's Palin's Hot Thai Kitchen. But anyway, I do like to watch her. And she was doing a red Thai curry. And she's Thai and she does all Thai cooking. And she added pineapple to her curry. And I've never added pineapple. But I thought, oh, now that sounds interesting. So I'm thinking I'm going to add a little pineapple to this. So one of the things she did say is make sure that you squeeze the juice out of your pineapples so they can kind of rehydrate in the curry sauce and absorb the curry coconut milk 
back into the pineapple. So I think that's what we're going to do. I have one cup of pineapple here that I have used the potato masher to mash through a sieve. And that's going in. There we go. And then Okay, and then we'll just add our vegetables back in. Start adding those in. I have a little bit of uh, bok choy leaves that I had left over from the stir fry, so I'm gonna throw those in there. I've got some sliced carrots from the stir fry package that I've used for the egg rolls. And we did that before, so you saw it. And then the last two things I have are my red peppers and my snow peas, but I'm not gonna put them in just now because they take a little, they don't take very long to cook. This lid does not go with this pan, but I like the clear lid, so maybe you could see through it to see what we were doing. So, all righty, we'll let that go for a minute, and then we will move on to the next phase. And as you can see, we have a nice little simmer on it, and there we go, another subscription. Don't you forget to subscribe today. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few more of my vegetables. And then we're gonna start adding our fish and our shrimp, and this will be done. Let's give it a stir. And then let's give it a little taste. Like I said, I don't want to have a hard boil on this. Just a nice good simmer, get it heated through, get my aromatics soft. So I'm gonna taste this and see how we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so one of the things my family loves besides the little snow peas are these little baby carrots, um, carrots, baby corns. They come in the can, so they're already cooked. I'm just going to dump, that has one can in it. And then I'm going to add to that my snow peas and my red bell peppers. So you can see why this can be so hearty. And there we go, stirring that all in. They're gonna get a little bit soft. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in my cod. It doesn't take long for the cod to cook, but it, the cod does take longer than the shrimp. As you can see, I've got nice big chunks of cod, and I'm just gonna set them down in there. I'll put them down, push them down in there. Remember, this is really hot, so you gotta be careful. So I'm putting my cod in there. This is fresh cod. I am not sure about using frozen cod because I never do. I get the fresh cod. And this is probably about a pound. And as you can see, it's pretty thick. And I've cut it into big chunks. Now I'm gonna get my spoon, push those down into it. So they're totally covered. Put the lid back on it. I'm gonna give them about three minutes maybe four at the most, and we'll see how they look. My soup, my curry comes back to a nice little simmer. Not too hard of a simmer because we don't want to break up our fish. We want it to be pretty big whole pieces. So our cod is ready. It's been three minutes on my cod, maybe three and a half altogether. And I'm going to make sure this is focused. It says it is. So there we are. And as you can see, some of it is floated to the top, which is fine. And then if I pick up one of the pieces, you can see it's nice and white and opaque, and it's held together well. So it's in there, it's good to go. That was three minutes, maybe three and a half altogether. My little snow peas are soft, my red bell pepper, uh, are soft, so we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead, and uh, now I'm going to add in my shrimp, and I'm gonna give it about two minutes in the hot simmering curry. There we go. I'm gonna stir it in, make sure it's well submerged. This is just poaching our fish right in our curry. And there we go, it's all submerged. There's a few pieces sticking out there, I'll get it down in there. 
And so one of the things that, you know, if you don't like seafood, then you could put chicken in here. And if you wanted to go fast, you could just debone a rotisserie chicken and put it in there. Um, so you could do chicken. And if you want to cut up pork, you know, you could do that. Whatever you like. I just know my family really likes the shrimp and the cod in there. So we're going to do that and put my lid back on. I'm going to set my timer for about two minutes. Go. And then I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. We're going to take our lid off and see how our shrimp looks. And nice and steamy. It's still simmering in there. I'm going to put, make sure we're in focus here. There we go. And so here we are. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. Nice and pink. There's a piece of pineapple. Our cod is perfect. And this is ready to eat. Here we go with our seafood curry, red Thai curry that we use the Thai curry paste. We use the coconut milk and we use some chicken stock and then our various vegetables. And it looks really yummy. So you can see it here, but I'm dying to try the pineapple. So I'm going to get me a little piece of pineapple with some rice and whatever I can scoop up with it. Okay. Mmm. Yeah. That's really good. That pineapple really brightens it up. And I didn't even squeeze my lime on there. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I have to agree. So pineapple does adds a different element to it. Well, why don't you give it a go? See what you can find to put in your curry. Let me know how you like it and what your favorite things are to go in curry. Anyway, see you next week. Bye. Mm. One more bite. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. This makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Very happy. Yep. Good.